Our customers are quite varied. Um, we serve just about everybody in the community from school kids to academic researchers to the family historian to the person who's curious about how long that house has been on that particular corner. Um, even things like I've seen a ghost in my house and I want to know who died there. So those kind of questions from soup to nuts, we take it all. If you attended high school in Waterloo Region, you might be mortified to learn that your high school yearbook and that hairdo may be preserved as a historical resource in the Grace Schmidt Room at the Kitchener Public Library. Local yearbooks are one of 10 favorite items we explore in the vast collection which has been documenting the area's history and families since it opened in 1984. My name is Karen ball Pyatt, and I'm the manager of the Grace Schmidt Room of Local History at Kitchener Public Library. In a nutshell, I help curate the resources here for local history and genealogy at the library, and I help make those resources available to people and researchers um, who come in to use our collection. And I also do programming, offer different services, help people with dig digitization, um, helping people find lost relatives, um, helping people discover the history of their homes, their community, different events and all just really neat stuff like that. Our collection covers Waterloo County, Waterloo Region, so that's what we're focused on. So I'd like to show you some of my favorite things here in the Grace Schmidt Room of Local History at Kitchen Public Library. This is part of our yearbook collection um, and our yearbooks are beloved by staff and customers alike. Um, they are a snapshot of, in time of our glory days back in high school. Um, it's great fun to go through them and see the, all the old hairstyles and clothing, um, old former classmates, former loves, knowns, all those sort of things. Well, we generally collect high school yearbooks from the City of Kitchener to high schools, but anything other than the City of Kitchener, we often get as donations. So someone who's cleaning up their home, uh, cleaning up their parents' home, um, downsizing, um, we often get yearbooks um, donated to us as part of that. These are the diaries of Liata Gingrich Hoffman. She was born 1898 in Yale, Michigan. Um, her family moved here um, in the early 1900s. Um, by about 1911, I believe they were in the Preston area. Um, they had a house in Blair, and she eventually moved to Preston after um, the, her father passed away. So Liata married late in life, um, and um, she mar married Carl F. Hoffman. Um, and he had a son, so she had a stepson. Um, and she kept these diaries from about 1919 until about 1983, um, is the last one we have in the collection. Um, and they're very sparse in terms of what, they, what she's written in there. So it's mostly just um, anecdotes for the day, what she did, whether she did ironing, baked pie, um, went and visited somebody. But she also had interests as a music teacher, and she was a member of the Galt Music Teachers Association. Um, and she, um, was very active in the community um, with the fellow teachers, um, attended church, um, visited family, um, took care of all those um, all, all those kind of normal household um, day chores. And even though there's not a lot of detail, it gives you a sense of the ebb and flow of life that that she did. You know, certain things on certain days, um, and you can see the passage of seasons when she talks about um, fruit becoming available and doing canning, um, baking rafts of pies um, for family and such like that. So it's really kind of a neat kind of little snapshot of what this person did. So this is our William Green in Rome arrow shirt collection. We have a series of records which includes photographs, some ledgers, and some advertising material from the arrow shirt company, which was William Green in Rome started about 1884 in Berlin. They were originally located at the corner of Queen South and Cortland in the building which houses the co-op in McDonald Electric at one point in time. Um, they moved um, in 1913 to the Benton and St. George Street location. Um, where the Arab lofts are now located. Um, they were, um, William Greens in Rome made shirts and detachable collars um, and ties um, and other clothing material or clothing items. Um, they were bought out by the Cluett Peabody Company of, um, out of the state in about 1920 and um, expanded the plant at Benton and St. George Street over the years. Um, a lot of people um, worked at Arrow Shirts. Um, Arrow Shirts were known um, 
internationally. Um, and they were one of the first manufacturers to manufacture shirts with collars attached rather than detached. And apparently they stopped making ties in about the 1950s. So, um, and then they expanded to knitwear um, and other, um, other clothing items. But the plant was, um, Arrow Shirts was bought out by Forsyth um, in 2000-2001 and the Arrow Shirt factory closed its location on Benton Street in the spring of 2001 and the development of the Arrow Lofts took place after that. So this is part of our Mabel Krug collection of Playbill scrapbooks. So Mabel Krug was a super volunteer in Kitchener during the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, up into the 80s. Um, she was involved with uh, a lot of arts organizations. Um, so she was born in 1902 in Bristol, Pennsylvania. She, her family moved to Montreal and she attended Stansted um, College and she went to McGill um, Conservancy, Music Conservancy, and she studied voice and had a very promising operatic career ahead of her. However, that changed in 1924 when she met and married Henry C. Krug, a Kitchener industrialist. In her new hometown, she um, saw that there was a void for arts and she was very passionate about the arts. So she was involved in just about nearly every arts organization in Kitchener. So she's left a humongous arts legacy and her collection here is a lovely collection of playbills of different uh, performances that she's attended over time, whether they be here or in other communities. But you can tell she really loved the arts um, and love performances and was very diligent in attending and documenting what she had attended. So these are books on Indigenous history and Indigenous issues. Our challenge has always been finding material of a local nature that documents Indigenous history. But we're committed to expanding the collection, developing the collection in collaboration with community partners. Um, we're really happy to have these particular items in the collection because it forces us to think in a different way um, and to kind of use a different lens when examining history in this particular area. Um, and we're hoping um, that we can develop the collection further um, and um, to be able to share with, with everybody um, a history of people that has been truly been lost. This is a collection of ribbons and medals that were accumulated by David Forsyth, who was the coach of the Berlin Rangers football, or actually soccer, I guess we would call it now, um, team. They were quite successful at the turn of the century, um, so 1899, uh, 1900. They were quite active in international tournaments, but you can see from here they played all over and um, were recipients of a number of awards. David Dyer was from the Niagara region. He was born in 1932. He um, moved here in the 50s and worked with a photographer by the name of Harold Trussler. He eventually took over Trussler's studio and offered portrait services to people in KW. We have his negative collection, so we have all the negatives for the sittings of his different portraits. So we've got family portraits, individual portraits, lovely um, sort of wedding portraits too, um, which are really kind of neat, that kind of era when people got dressed up for a photograph and that sort of thing. Another community that we like to give more exposure to in terms of their historical past is the Rainbow community. So we have a lovely collection of LGBTQ plus uh, publications in our holdings and they really document the sort of depth of issues. They also document pride and sort of the awakening of the community too, which is really great. So this collection is um, part of the Scots Future Leaders of Canada collection. They were based out of Kitchener, and this is their scrapbook from the Officers' Mess, which documents uh, a lot of movement of Scots Future Leaders through the system and overseas, training exercises, information on people gathering for bands, for dinners, and kind of all the kind of comings and goings of the regiment. It includes telegraphs, newspaper clippings, programs, all different things like that. These are films that were part of our Greater Kitchener-Waterloo Chamber of Commerce collection. Most of them were taken about 1947. There is a film called A Conestoga Wagon Stopped Here. 1947 done by John Colombo, um, who was a filmmaker, electrician, repair, refrigerator repair person, um, but actually the father of John Robert Colombo, the Canadian essayist. And, um, these films were promotional for Kitchener um, to kind of sell the industrial potential of this area and to entice people to come here to um, start their business and build their factories. 
So the um, Conestoga wagon stopped, uh, stopped here is a basically a history of the area and then um, it's a promotional film toward the end about all the different industries that have settled here and are thriving and that sort of thing and you can too if you join us sort of thing. Um, they include a lot of aerial um, photography of the area. Um, we had these films digitized in I guess about 2017, 2018, and we had a whole um, set of movie nights. People came to see them and kind of reminisced about um, different scenes that they had seen in the movie.